The Economist, as everyone knows, is famous for its quality of content. Even a brand as successful and established as The Economist can completely transform people's perceptions. People who didn't read The Economist thought of us as a right-wing publication. But they read an article, it changes their perception, and ultimately it changes their perception of The Economist as well. We created an advertising campaign that was provocative and well-crafted. We took a digital skill set. We ended up building audiences in a completely new way using digital techniques and programmatic techniques. And it was all about getting out that amazing content in front of people. And talking about the things that they're most interested in, in the moment they're most interested in. It was a real instance of ripping up the rule book, um, looking at it with a complete fresh pair of eyes, actually a little bit of allowing your digital team to run amok. Back in 2014, we were very profitable as we are now, but we noticed that circulation was beginning to flatline a little bit. It was becoming increasingly harder to get the incremental uh, readers on board. Our advertising campaign we ran in the 1980s, this is the famous White Out of Red campaign that Abbott Mead Vickers uh, produced, the outdoor posters that everyone loves and knows and thinks we're still running actually, funnily enough. Although it's very, very successful, it was too successful in that it positioned us as a magazine that was for the elite and too right-wing, perhaps, we'd argue, and in fact research identified. They just weren't addressing or they weren't resonating with, um, with an audience on, on a much wider scale and it was a much bigger sized pot to go after. And this was a more progressive, globally curious audience, probably people like you and me rather than people who maybe want to get to the boardroom. So we define the audiences as the globally curious. These are, these are people who have a passion to understand what goes on in the world, but not just to see what's happening, but understand why, what the causes are. And that's where the economist's insight and analysis is key. So, I mean, ultimately, we were going to be measured on getting a brand new audience to start reading some of the content and then move them on to subscription. So, so we're actually being founded on some fairly hard metrics. The targets were very aggressive, in fact. We needed to deliver at least 9,500 subscribers as a result of this activity. The result of that would be to, to turn the flat line into growth. When we spoke to current readers and current subscribers, what really came out was that each of them had had their own epiphany um, in some regards. So something that went, oh, OK, this is what The Economist is, is, is actually about. So our role for communications was to bring the, com the content to the fore. We started to think that perhaps maybe a, a more digitally focused approach where users could engage with the actual content and get closer to the brand however they wanted to via apps, via websites, um, using the audio that The Economist can provide. So we just started to think in a different way that would allow um, our consumers to get closer to us. Right from the ground up, we moved away from um, you know, TGI and small sample based means of building audiences and started to look at actually a much bigger pool of people, you know, the Economist's own subscriber base. Once we started doing that, we then began to profile that audience based on you know, who they are, what their usage habits were, were they into politics, were they into tech? And we started to get a much richer picture of actually who would be interested in The Economist. So the key insight that underpinned this campaign was there is nothing more provocative than the truth. When you put surprising insight in front of people, a surprising truth about a topic, that gets them to sit up and take notice, that gets them to take action. So the challenge that we had was we know that that Economist epiphany isn't going to come on that first read. You know, on average, people take four to five stories to tip into subscription. Um, so what we need to do is nudge you on to read more. We then began to look at data sets and technology. So we actually started to look at segmenting them based on the sections of the newspaper itself. We saw that some people were much more interested in technology or politics. And eventually we had segments which were defined by, you know, what their passions were. So this was ultimately a programmatic campaign. Programmatic is about how we get the right message in front of the right person. We can see from their behavior what they're interested in and we can connect the creative work to that. At its worst, that can mean that you're being hunted around the web talking about a product you once looked at. We needed to take it on a level. Um, and ideally to link to not just something that you're generally interested in or has interested you in the past, but actually to what you're interested in right now. To do that, uh, our partners UM built a bespoke piece of technology that effectively used existing technologies and brought them together, but allowed us to scan the content of a page, the web page you're reading right now, and match that to the content that we had from The Economist. As we brought them in, we would cookie the user. The dynamic uh, ad server was able to understand what content had been consumed. We know that you're into politics, so actually we've got these eight politics articles. We think that this one, or at least the ad server thinks, or the machine thinks, that this one is the most appropriate for 
all of the, the various attributes that this cookie, that this user has. And that's where we started to get some really, really startling results. So the way it worked was that uh, there were two routes to creative execution. Uh, one was genuine dynamic uh, advertising that was created on the fly that we tested. And the other was a bank of pre-existing crafted work that we developed that we would match on the fly. So that first route would literally draw in a headline off the database, a, a, a key visual, and present that, which gave you the uh, ability to have thousands of, of executions in market. But what was interesting was that while that really unlocked the power of the machine to the max, they never worked as effectively as crafted work that was dynamically matched on the fly. So actually, whilst we were making incredible matches using, um, using the machine, we were also had a very manual process of selecting you know, what we thought were the most provocative ads, the ones that would change people's mindsets, uh, and really kind of tailoring and crafting ads around that article um, that, would be, you know, that would be able to cut through and change people's minds. So our target when we were, were briefed was to uh, draw in 9,500 new subscribers. That was an annual target. Uh, we actually bust through those numbers within nine days, can you believe, nine days. And after that, we had to reset targets entirely and uh, we, we doubled up and kept doubling up. Ultimately, we actually drove 64,500 new subscribers. So we smashed through that target and went on. Um, I think what was interesting was that um, it was brilliantly explosive at the start. We proved that this could work and this would uh, really drive subscriptions in a way that we hadn't anticipated, but we got better at it. As we kept optimizing, we got smarter at the work that would bring in people that were most likely to convert and how we would nudge them on and ultimately get the subscription. Overall, those 64,500 subscribers will generate over their lifetime just under 52 million pounds in lifetime revenue. That's been a massive success for the business. So taking into account the budget we spent and the revenue we raised, uh, this campaign drove 25 pounds in revenue for every single pound we spent. The tech skills required uh, were varied and uh, it was interesting to see that every function in a campaign development are all pulled together. So you had to have good tech understanding amongst the creative teams, amongst the data teams, and amongst the tech plumbing teams, as well as the strategy guys. They had to, uh, they couldn't, they couldn't overpromise in terms of strategy, it had to be uh, delivered. As an agency, we believe that digital should be much higher and much, um, and certainly at the forefront of the planning cycle. And I think that this campaign shows that when you do that, when you put people who think differently, who approach things with a, you know, perhaps a more binary mindset, you know, you get some startling results. You build audiences in a different way. Um, you're able to use bigger sample sizes. You're able to use ad technology to really personalize and map content in a really, really bespoke way. It was a real instance of um, ripping up the rule book um, looking at it with a complete fresh pair of eyes, actually a little bit of allowing your digital team to run amok. The campaign has been successful, I think, because we delivered to a burning audience need. And that need is for access to quality, truthful, fact-driven content, content that people can use. And we delivered that in spades. We put that content in front of people and boy, did they ever engage with it. I think the reason this campaign's been so successful is ultimately there's such strength in The Economist content. Uh, it's, it's really powerful and when you read it, you see that. When you experience it for yourself, you have that Economist epiphany. What this campaign enabled us to do was find ways to bring that to people that they wouldn't anticipate, but also catch their eye with a really provocative execution that makes them want to click through and find out more. But I think there are a number of learnings that we can take out. A lot of them are about the way we worked, but uh, one of the big ones for me is that balance of man and machine. The, the big learning that we had this great technology. We have you know, a brilliant technology that hadn't existed before. It's been built especially for this and is unmistakably a key part of the success of this campaign. But to really unlock it, you've got to have the power of a great human creative mind. And when you bring those two together, that's when you deliver massive success. What was really, really important about it was that we took so many steps to make sure that when we did, um, when we did serve an ad to a user, that we could be as personalized and as relevant to them as possible without taking over their page um, with no, no pop-ups, anything like that. And I think that, that that is digital best practice for me. And I think that's what really, really stands out for this campaign. It's, it's keeping things simple, even though there's so much complex stuff going on underneath the surface. The lessons I draw from this campaign, as far as um, helping other marketeers is concerned, is to make sure you get all your agencies and partners aligned, make sure they share the same objectives, uh, be clear on those objectives, 
and uh, don't give yourself four weeks to do it, give yourself a couple of months to do it. And above all, making sure you have the customer insight that you need to deliver to. That's most important. It's the basic, basic marketing tenant, isn't it?